Pterosaurs are rare in the fossil record, an animal commonly called a pterodactyl. They're fine little delicately built animals that are built for flying. So their bones are easily destroyed once they die. There are only 30 specimens known from the whole world. Most of them consist of just a single bone. We're working on a new pterosaur. It's a new genus called Celestiventus hansoni. Pterosaurs, they're not birds. They're not close related to birds. They're not dinosaurs. They have really long wings. They're the first vertebrate flyers. Because pterosaurs are very rare. This is the first one that it's for sure a pterosaur, a Triassic pterosaur from the United States. Celeste Ventus was found in northeastern Utah, not far from Dinosaur National Monument. The exciting thing about this find is that the bones were found in sandstone, dune-type sands, and the bones aren't crushed. Most pterosaur bones, they look like roadkill. We can see preserved in 3D many features that cannot be seen in other pterosaurs. The bones remain intact three-dimensionally. So we expose them, then we CAT scan them, and we can look at them internally as well as externally. One of the exciting things about this one is we have a complete brain case. We can see the uh, areas that control the eyes were large, had fantastic eyesight. This is the same object. On this side, there's no bone exposed and then extract the bone digitally. We have the complete skull roof here. No other Triassic pterosaur has the, the brain uh, preserved. It, it is important for the knowledge of the anatomy of the pterosaurs. This really shows how three-dimensional this is. We can see all kinds of details. There's actually a, a ridge running up along the skull. Like you see in some birds, there's a ridge, probably had some horn-like material on it in life. Early pterosaurs were small, relatively small. This one was giant for this time. It had a wingspan of five feet. It had a skull that was this long. These represent the side of the face. The eye would have been right here, the nostrils out here, and here's the three-dimensional printout of this bone. We could never extract the bone completely from the rock because under its own weight, it would collapse. Even these printouts are so thin that they can easily be broken. Being able to CT a bone, extract it from the rock, and then hold it in your hand has revolutionized things. And you look at it on the monitor, rotate it any way you want. You can send it to your colleagues overseas and study it together. So it's really changed. It's been a big game changer. Pterosaurs are, are rare worldwide. We had no expectations to find a pterosaur, and there it was. Three-dimensional, preserved right among the bones of these dinosaurs and these crocodilomorphs. So we're really lucky to find this in the midst of this, you know, this ancient giant desert system.